Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens, Episode 2, Depression. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my co-host, Madison Whalen. Great to be here, Daddy. Today, we are going to be talking about depression. What I want to do is start off with defining what depression is from a clinical standpoint. Based on the definition from the American Psychiatric Association, Depression is a common and serious medical illness that negatively affects how you feel, the way you think, and how you act. Depression causes feelings of sadness and or a loss of interest in activities once enjoyed. It can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems and can decrease a person's ability to function at work or at home, or in the case of a teenager, at school. So, let me start off by saying, do you ever feel depressed? Yes. So, let's talk about that. How often do you think you feel depressed? Well, whenever I have a negative day at school, I normally feel depressed. Now, are there triggers or things that make you feel depressed? Yeah, mainly what happens is my mood swings act up, I make the day horrible, and then I just get depressed. So let's talk about your mood swings. Where do these mood swings originate from? Well, it's just like from the grown body. and Your hormones cause an an emotional and physical and mental effect on your body. So you're going through the the changes that are common with um, puberty at this point in time. As a result of the hormonal imbalance that you're going through, or the fluctuating, I wouldn't, don't want to say imbalance, but it's a fluctuating, fluctuating hormones. You have good days and bad days, I take it? Yep. Would you say you have more good days than bad days? Nope. So you have more bad days than good days? Yeah. You have mood swings, and what usually is the cause of these mood swings? Well, basically, if anything small were to happen, like, say, if I had lost a level in my game, I would get outraged and start screaming and then just get all worked up. And then at the end, I realized it was for nothing. And at school, it gets more affected than when I'm at home. So when you have these, these, we'll call them outbursts, for lack of a better term, When you have these outbursts, do you direct your frustration at other people? Well, sometimes. I mean, I don't mean to, of course, but my mood swings just take over my whole body, and then, poof, whenever they're gone, I realized I made a big mistake. And how long does it take for this mood swing to pass and for you to sort of ground yourself again? Well, normally it pretty much takes the whole day. Like, if I get mad in the morning... It'll take a few um, mind breaks, I'll call them, okay. to finally get my ground back and realize what I did wrong. So you could get triggered early in the morning and that sort of sets a bad tone for the whole day. Yeah, pretty much. So you talk about mind breaks. Explain to me what these are. Basically just taking a breather of what I got mad at and just trying to think it over. So almost like meditating. And trying to calm yourself from that incident. Is that correct? Correct. So, there's um, a number of symptoms of depression. I'm not, you know, I'm not a a psychiatrist or psychologist, so I, I can't say whether or not what you're going through is depression. But there are clinical symptoms of depression. Let me run down a few of these, and you tell me if you experience these. Feelings of sad, sadness or having a depressed mood? Yes, I have felt that way before. Okay, and that's triggered from your mood swings? Okay. 
Well, the effect for my mood swings. Right. Uh, loss of interest or pleasure in activities you once enjoyed. Sometimes that's happened. Uh, changes in appetite, weight loss, or gain unrelated to dieting. I can't really say. I mean, sometimes you would know I wouldn't really... I would eat a few bites of food and then I'd be, like, I'm full, but that's really all... I don't really think that's causing by depression. Well, and, and these don't cause the depression. These are how your depression manifests. These are the mm -hmm. symptoms of the depression. Um, trouble sleeping or sleeping too much? Well, I think trouble sleeping is definitely the obvious one. Okay, so you do have trouble sleeping then? Yes. Okay. I mean, I'm still able to get some sleep, but yeah, I still have trouble sleeping. Now, do you find situations where you're sleeping too much? Nope, never. Okay. A loss of energy or increased fatigue? Well, I do feel like I I lose energy whenever I have my mood swings or whenever I feel depressed. Uh, increase in purposeless physical activity, such as hand wringing or pacing or slowed movements and speech. These are more of the physical effects. Well, I do sometimes pace around, try to calm myself down. Okay. Now, is that while you're having a mood swing, or is it after the fact? It's normally after the fact. Feeling of worthlessness or guilt. This is a big emotional drain from depression. Well, sometimes I do feel guilt okay. for what I've done and how it affected other people. So, as a result of an emotional outburst, if you yell at someone or you're mean to someone because of your mood swing, then you feel a sense of guilt as a result of that. Mm -hmm. How about difficulty thinking, concentrating, or making decisions? Well, sometimes it's happened. Like, whenever I have my mood swings, it's hard to concentrate. And whenever I'm depressed, I just feel like I want to be left alone. Okay. And sometimes, you know, given the... the outburst aspect of the mood swings sometimes that's probably for the best so that you don't you know lash out at someone mm -hmm. and the last one in here is probably the biggest one and the one that that i think concerns most parents thoughts of death or suicide do you ever have any kind of thoughts like that no i've never actually thought of it and i never want to actually kill myself i actually have my death being that i killed myself okay well, that's good. I, that, that one was safe for last week because that really is, is the big one. Do you think you're more depressed than other kids your age? Well, I don't see them being affected at school. Sometimes I can't help it and I just cry. I haven't really seen anyone else do that, so... So you, do you think... But then again, I don't really know what goes on in their lives, I mean... Maybe they don't have both parents, and maybe they're just trying to stay strong. I could see that. Aside from the hormonal issues that you're dealing with right now, is there anything in your life that is depressing? Anything, do you feel you're not treated fairly at something? Do you feel that you're neglected? Do you feel anything like that? Well, kind of. Okay. Because... Whenever we have gym, people always doubt my skills because I'm not very athletic, like I've said before. Right. They always choose me last, and they always ask for the ball. So the treatment Whenever that you I get. Have it. So the treatment that you get at school is a contributing factor to these feelings, these negative feelings that you have. Yes. Um, is there anything you are able to do to combat that in gym class? No, not really. Okay. And have you talked to your teachers about this? No, I prefer to keep it to myself and my parents. Okay. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, there's there's only so much that your parents can do, and I'm, I'm sure will do to try. You know, Mommy and I will do anything that we can to try to resolve these situations. But if you feel that you're you're being mistreated by your classmates, you know, you have to say something to your teachers. You don't want it to build up and get progressively worse. Besides, outside of school, are there any things that, that get you down or get you depressed? 
I guess the fact about Dory, about my cat Dorian. She's getting older and she's infirm. She's not as healthy as she used to be. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a topic that we're, we'll wind up talking about later. Um, the death of a pet and stuff like that. It, it happens. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, most household pets, uh, their lifespans are significantly less than a human's lifespan. So as a result, we, suscept we, we make ourselves susceptible to having to go through that. Mm -hmm. uh, are there anything else that, that causes depression for you? I guess just bad things that normally happen at school that make me just think of myself. Okay. Like stress at school. And, and yes, there is others, uh, you know, I understand that there are stresses and there are pressures at school that put a weight on you. And we'll talk about those in, in later podcasts about, you know, what they are specifically and how to correct them. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like the majority of depression that you go through at this point in time is derived from experiences at school or things as a result of your hormonal changes. Mm -hmm. So there's really nothing, and I don't want to demean what is legitimate sources of depression for you, but in the grand scheme of things, there's nothing major that's the problem. I mean, you will, you know, you're in the stages of, of puberty. You're, you'll grow through the hormonal imbalances. Episodes at school are unfortunate, but not uncommon. As you go through school, you'll get through those. There's nothing major, like you don't get uh, neglected at home. You're not abused. You have a nice home. You've got a roof over your head. You're not malnourished. You're fed. Well, that's the thing. At home... I have a happy life, but if I get to school, it's like the happiness is gone, and I just have to pull through it. Now, do you have friends at school that you... Yes. I mean, they know what I'm going through. Okay. Are they going through the same thing? Well, one of my friends who's the same age as me is going through something similar. So you have friends at school, or at least one, who's going through similar issues as you? Mm-hmm. Do you provide support to her? Do you guys support each other? Yes. We both support each other in the best way we can. Now, is, do you find some comfort in that? Does that help you get through the day? Sometimes. It's important to have someone that, you know, a shoulder that you can lean on or, or you know, someone that you can be there for. Mm -hmm. And it also goes for someone who is only two years younger than me. She goes through the same problems as me. And she's going through them, obviously, earlier in life than you are then. Yes. I mean, you guys get along pretty well then. Yes, but unfortunately, whenever my mood swings act up, she's mainly the person who I affect. Because she's the person that's closest to you. Yes. That's unfortunate. But she normally just wants to ignore me because she just doesn't want me to get mad and... I don't blame her. I mean, if my friend was angry, I would have also stayed my distance until she wanted to talk. Right. And that's exactly what she does. Every time we get, every time I get angry at her, we always resolve it in the end. In doing my research into this topic, I did discover that between 2004... In 2014, there was a John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health study that indicated that there was a 37% increase in depression among teens. So this is a problem that is not isolated to you or you and your friend. This is a problem that is pretty widespread. Mm -hmm. They estimate that 11% of teenagers experience depression in any given year. And in girls, that number goes up to 17.3%. So there's a lot of things out there that cause depression in kids your age. And that level of depression goes up even more with girls. 
and there's a lot of factors to it. You know, some of the factors that they had cited were cyberbullying. Um, and specifically, they talk about a higher use of smartphones by girls than boys. And there's a lot of cyberbullying that goes on through social media. Now, how, how much exposure do you have to social media on your... You have a phone, right? Yes. And how much exposure to social media do you have? Not much. So that's one area that we don't have to concern ourselves too much about. Yes, at least not now. Another thing they had was socialization. So they say girls may experience more disagreements with friends and more hostility among peers. So that kind of sounds like it hits on the nail of your mood swings there. Exactly. So that could be one of the sources of some of the depression. It also says girls may talk to their friends more, but instead of finding solutions, may ruminate on the bad things in life more. So you understand what that means? Yes, they would. Instead instead of talking about the positives of life, they would talk about the negatives. Exactly. And one of the things that mommy and daddy try to tell you to do all the time is focus on the positives. Sometimes the negatives can be very overwhelming. And the negatives are the things that are up in your face. And you, as a result of that, you tend to lose sight on the positive things in life. Um, and sometimes, sometimes they're little things. Sometimes it's, you know, a thank you for, for helping someone do something. Or it's a little gift someone gives you. Or it's a little extra time that someone spends with you. Or it could just be a teacher, you know, that sees that maybe you're down and... and you know, they pull you aside and they have a talk with you and they, they pick you up a little bit. So there's a lot of positive that goes on that kind of goes unnoticed. And if you tend to focus on the negatives, and there are plenty of negatives, but if you tend to focus on those, you'll see less of the positives. And that tends to bring you down. And, and this statement kind of speaks to that. They also talk about the fact that teens might not know that they're depressed. Sometimes you just go through life and you think, you know, everything's okay. But really, you've got this buildup of depression behind you. So they talk about some of the forms, some of the physical forms that depression might take. And you tell me if you run into any of these. When you're depressed, you can have stomach aches or headaches. Do you experience those frequently? Not frequently, but sometimes I experience headaches. Now, these are warning signs, so if you are experiencing these, that might be a key for you to reach out and talk to someone. It's not common, I'll tell you that. It's sometimes a little rare whenever... Okay, how about feeling tired a lot? Mm, Well, I think it's only because I don't really get a very good sleep. Again... There's factors that contribute to the symptoms. So, when that's the case, like for instance, if I happen to walk past at 3 o'clock in the morning and I see you're watching TV, that's an immediate sign to me that there's something going on, that that you really shouldn't be up at 3 o'clock in the morning watching TV. I just couldn't fall asleep last night. Yeah, and there's reasons for it. Sometimes, you know, there's the the subconscious of your mind that's churning over things and stuff like that. Mm Mm-hmm. My point is is that when things like this happen, that's when you need to reach out because not everyone would have noticed that. Had I slept through the night, I wouldn't have known that you were up at 3 o'clock in the morning watching TV. But if you know you're up in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning watching TV, then it might be worthwhile to come, come talk to me or mommy. And, you know, we just sit and we talk and we, we have a discussion about things. It's not... Anything bad that comes out of it or anything, but sometimes those little discussions help. Nothing really happened last night. I was just couldn't get any sleep. Okay, that's fine. Uh, One of the other factors is um, increased irritability. So do you find yourself being more irritable? What does that mean? More irritated. By people interacting with you, or... Well, I don't really like other people talking to me other than, like... (laughs) What? What? Okay. So, right there, that's a problem, that you don't like other people talking to you. Well, there's a few people I would allow, but most of the time I 
prefer to be alone. Let's see, now that could be a contributing factor to your depression. Because when you're around people, you're very energetic and bubbly and happy. When you're alone, you've got all that, that negativity stirring around in your head that's just driving your thoughts at that point in time. You know, what happens when you have a sleepover? You have a ball. You know, you socialize with your friends. You're active. You're playing. You're doing different things. You're not thinking about the negative things. So the more interaction that you have with kids your age and the more fun that you have, the less depressed you would be. Honestly, I don't know why, but I just prefer to be alone other than with my friends and my family. We've talked about your mood. Mm -hmm. We've talked about um, whether or not you think your peers are depressed. Um, What do you think you should do when you feel you're depressed? What do you think is the right action? Well, if I feel depressed... I might want to talk to somebody or just be left alone. Do you think being left alone is the right thing to do when you're depressed? Probably not. Probably not, no. But I just feel like I want to, I just want to be left alone. And I know, and, and believe me, Daddy's experienced very deep depression in the past. And I've felt the same symptoms you have. And I've taken the same course of actions that you have where when I'm depressed, I want to be left alone. And I can tell you from personal experience, that's probably the last thing that should happen. When you're depressed, you are self-consuming. Being alone is not going to bring you out of your depression. All it's going to do is get you deeper into it. By interacting with the people around you that love you and support you, That is what lifts you up from a depression. You'd be surprised how effective it is. So when you are feeling depressed, that's when you need to reach out. That's the last point in time that you want to, you know, pull back and and be by yourself. What makes you happy? I mean, being around my family makes me happy, I guess. Okay, well that's good. That means we're doing something right. What else makes you happy? What activities do you like to do that make you happy? Watch TV, play video games. Anything that includes other people? Well, I like to play with my friends with their toys. Maybe that's something that we need to look at doing more often, because you don't do that very often, do you? I only do it at school, and I don't really see my friends the entire day. I only see them like a few hours of the day. The rest of the day, I just spend at school. So maybe if we had some more interaction with your friends outside of school, that would help improve your mood. Or at least have time with people. Right? Uh, sure. Yeah, you know, I'm not really selling you on that, am I? I... It's not. No. Okay. So what else makes you happy? Is there... Like, what's... Is there a food or a meal that makes you happy? Sushi I would make me happy. I like sushi. Sushi makes you happy. Okay. Uh, what about for sweets? When you have a mood swing, is there something that you eat that helps you with your mood swings? Yes. Like what's that? Chocolate. So chocolate helps. So as long as we keep chocolate in the house, we can tame the savage beast that's inside you. <laughs> so what else? Do you like going places? Um, yes. Where where do you like to go that makes you happy? Sometimes to Disney. Sometimes to Disney? Well, that's good, because we're going there next week. I know. So that should make you happy. I know. But what about stuff that's not elaborate, you know, week-long vacations thousands of miles away? Um. Are there day trips? Are there museums you like to go to? Do you like to go to the mall? Not really. I mean, I like... To, um, Are there play places you like to go? Like Funplex or someplace like that that you enjoy going to? Well, I guess Funplex would be one of them. Now, it's more fun if we go with friends, though, right? Yeah. So, like, if a friend of yours was interested in going, we could probably take the two of you up to Funplex and you guys could spend the day at the Funplex. Yeah, I guess that would improve my mood. Well, these are some of the things that we need to look at like doing. I also like to... Um, 
meet my friends who don't go to my school, but I'm able to stay in contact with. Okay. And what would you do if you could meet them, meet up with them? Well, we would normally, like, have an activity planned, and then probably, if it was around lunchtime, we would get some lunch. And how often do you do that? Well, we did it more often over Christmas break, seeing as, well, we have lots of days off. That helps. Yeah, we got to catch up with a bunch of my friends and my and even my cousin. Do you like to pamper yourself? Do you like to go, like I know sometimes you go with mommy when she gets her nails done. Do you like foot baths? Do you like, you know, stuff like that that makes you relax? Mm, certain things, I guess. Okay. These are some of the things that we can focus on that will try to help you get through these mood swings and give you something positive to focus on. And I think that's really what we need to do. That's really the theme of this. Okay. Was there any final thoughts that you had on teen depression? Well, I guess you shouldn't battle depression alone. And if anyone who is depressed, you might want to find out as soon as possible. Okay. I think there are very good points. Any last pointers for any teens out there who are depressed, what they should do? Well, you should try talking to people who you trust, who you love, and who will support you. Okay. Well, thank you for your time today, Madison. I appreciate it. I know it was a rather difficult discussion to talk about. Yes. But I appreciate you taking the time and being open about it. You're welcome. And I think that'll do it for this week's edition of Insights into Teens. Next week, we will be broadcasting on location from the happiest place in the world. Goodbye. Goodbye.